After the end of World War I, Western powers such as Britain and France, in order to prevent Germany from rising again, imposed strict limitations on the size of the German military. According to the provisions of the Treaty of Versailles, the total number of the German army could not exceed 100,000 men, and they were not allowed to be equipped with heavy weapons such as tanks, nor were they allowed to establish an air force. The navy could only have a few battleships, and was forbidden from having submarines. Under such strict restrictions, theoretically, Germany's military power had been castrated, and it should have been unable to pose a new threat to Britain and France. However, the reality was different. Throughout World War II, Germany successively armed 11 million troops, from the restricted force of $100,000, to expanding into a formidable army with 8 million soldiers. Hitler actually took only six years. This is puzzling. Within a mere six years, how did Hitler manage to expand his army to 8 million right under the noses of Britain and France? Before seriously investigating the issue, give the team a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your support. Before troops and horses move, provisions must go first. This is a very basic military theory. Hitler wanted to expand the army. The first issue to be resolved was that of funding. At that time, Germany was affected by the Great Depression of 1929. The number of unemployed surged, so there was no shortage of recruits. Some million strong and healthy young men needed to be fed. For the army of any country, this is a huge expense, not to mention Germany at that time, which had lost 13.5% of its territory due to World War I, 16% of its coal fields and half of its steel industry. At the same time, it was burdened with huge war reparations, According to the Treaty of Versailles, Germany was required to pay 226 billion marks in war reparations to countries like Britain and France. Although this was later reduced to 132 billion marks, it was still not a small amount, because these reparations were required to be paid in gold, according to the exchange rate at that time. The point to you. 2 billion marks were equivalent to 96,000 tons of gold. In today's terms, that would be nearly $4.2 trillion. Such a large loan severely overextended the German economy if they continued to pay war reparations, let alone expand the military, it would be a stroke of luck to avoid cutting the military. Therefore, Hitler wanted to raise funds to expand the military. The first step was to suspend the payment of war reparations to countries like Britain and France. He took advantage of the Great Depression that was happening globally, and the opportunity presented by the impending collapse of the German economy to force Britain and France to agree to suspend the reparations but this alone was still not enough to meet the financial needs for military expansion. Therefore, after Hitler came to power, he also took advantage of the economic crisis and the United States' desire to counterbalance Britain, to borrow heavily, mainly from the United States. Before World War II, Germany's national debt was just over $30 billion. By the end of World War II, Germany's debt had ballooned to $450 billion, increased by 15 times. It was precisely by suspending war reparations to Britain and France and incurring a large amount of debt that Hitler raised the funds needed for military expansion. Of course, having money alone was not enough. There also had to be people. Compared to raising enough funds to expand the army to 8 million, how to turn these 8 million young people into 8 million qualified soldiers was actually more difficult. During World War II, the German military massacred civilians and persecuted Jews, which was a very heinous act, but their combat effectiveness was definitely considered one of the strongest in the world. So how did Hitler achieve this? Actually, it was quite simple, just two methods. The first was to incite hatred, the second was to establish an extreme nationalist belief. Inciting hatred was mainly directed against the victorious countries of World War I, such as Britain and France, Churchill who once served as the Prime Minister of Britain at the time of the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, resigned and went home because of the excessive exploitation of Germany included in it, and predicted that this would not end the war. It would only sow the seeds of hatred for the next war. When Hitler came to power, the global economy was experiencing the Great Depression, and as a defeated nation of World War I, Germany was particularly hard hit by the economic crisis, at that time, nearly half of the German population was unemployed. The entire society was accumulating a great deal of resentment. Hitler keenly sensed this overall dissatisfaction in German society, and he provided his own answer. It was the unequal treatment Germany faced after World War I that plunged Germany into a deep crisis at the time. As a result, in the hearts of the young people, seeds of hatred were sown against the victorious nations of World War I, such as Britain and France. This inspired young people to join the military, 
and to strive for the normalization of Germany's international status with enthusiasm, apart from hatred. Hitler also exploited extreme nationalism to establish the idea that the Germanic people were a superior race. The belief that one should rise above other nations, if hatred was, the source of the German army's morale during World War II, then this extreme nationalism was the primal force that sustained such morale for a long time. It was precisely by inciting public dissatisfaction with the great powers such as Britain and France and extreme Germanic nationalism that Hitler found an extreme military spirit for his expanded army of 8 million. Found an extreme military spirit. By this point, all the objective conditions for Hitler's desired military expansion had been met. Hitler rose to power with the help of extreme nationalism to expand the German army and to return Germany to its rightful place was the promise he made to the electorate. And how to turn that promise into reality was the first challenge Hitler faced after coming to power. In order to fulfill his promise, he once said at a German cabinet meeting that the focus for the next five years, it's about establishing a powerful German army, whether all economic policies are good enough, whether they conform to the national conditions of Germany, the first question to ask is whether it is beneficial to the construction of the German army. To put it simply, this is absolute militarism. The introduction of all political and economic policies must serve the construction of the military. Under the guidance of this ideology, a vigorous process of military expansion began within Germany. By September 1939, the production of German weapons and military equipment had increased by 11.5 times compared to 1933. Aircraft manufacturing had almost increased by 22 times. By 1939, German armaments production was more than twice the combined total of Britain and America. At the national level, in German state investments, investment in the arms industry went from 23 in 1933 to 57 in 1935, more than doubling in two years. At the civilian level, there was a call for cannons, not butter. Advocating that farmers and workers lead extremely frugal lives, hand over all the money and supplies to cultivate the German army, it was precisely in this top-down planned and organized full-scale development that Germany during Hitler's rule became a war behemoth in the purest sense, from the government to the public, all served the purpose of military expansion and preparation. With money and people, there was also an efficient and focused national machinery to initiate. Within six years, Hitler expanded the army by 8 million without any internal resistance. Regarding Hitler's military expansion, apart from the problems faced within Germany, there was another very important influencing factor, which was the opinions of other major powers. So, at that time, countries like Britain and France, why didn't they stop Hitler? On one hand, it was because of the impact of the global economic depression, Britain and France had the will but not the power to stop Germany. Armed intervention was the only option. Before Germany completed its military expansion, this might have been possible, but at that time, Britain was too preoccupied with its own problems. There was simply no strength to send troops to intervene in Germany. On the contrary, in order not to let Germany completely deteriorate and thus involve themselves. Britain and France had to grit their teeth and agree to Hitler's demand to suspend war reparations. On the other hand, it was also because the great powers were jockeying for position and undermining each other, starting with Britain and France. After World War I, the most enthusiastic about punishing Germany were Britain and France. But their respective goals were different. Britain suppressed Germany because a strong Germany would compete with Britain for colonies worldwide while France suppressed Germany to be able to unify Western Europe's interior and completely eliminate Germany as a potential competitor. Based on these two different goals, Britain actually wanted to support Germany a bit after World War I, because without Germany as a counterbalance, France would dominate the Western European interior alone and would compete with Britain for territory. So it needed to play a balancing act between France and Germany. France wanted to suppress Germany, but Britain hoped Germany would be weaker, yet not too weak. This ultimately led to a conflict between the two over their policies towards Germany, and this conflict gave Hitler the time to expand his military. Meanwhile, the United States was already the world's number one economically, but in terms of politics and international influence, Britain was still the world's dominant power. So there was also a huge conflict between Britain and the United States. Even before World War II, the United States was planning to have a showdown with Britain for supremacy. They even had the plans drawn up. Therefore, the Anglo-American power struggle in Europe before World War II was also a very important set of international contradictions, and Germany keenly took advantage of this opportunity. 
choosing to flirt with the United States. The United States, in order to contain Britain, also strongly supported Germany and continuously proclaimed the injustice of the Treaty of Versailles internationally, striving for benefits for Germany. In short, at that time, the capitalist world was in a severe economic crisis, and the overt and covert struggles among the great powers provided Germany with a relatively stable period for military expansion. During the first few years after Hitler came to power, traditional great powers like Britain and France simply could not attend to Germany's military expansion. This indirectly shortened the time it took for Germany to complete its military expansion. From this perspective, rather than saying that Hitler within six years accomplished the act of expanding the military by eight million, it would be more accurate to say that the capitalist economic system, along with the Western great powers collectively assisted Germany, in completing the transformation from a restricted World War I defeated nation to becoming the strategic heartland of Europe in World War II.